you have all built a movement, uh, and we join you in that. And we have a president now who I think can lead a movement of uh, openness and inclusion uh, across the country. And I think, as you know, that he was committed to that in the campaign. And I think uh, he met what he said, and he's going to be committed to that uh, when he gets uh, into office. We just had a meeting with national leaders of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered community representing 41 different national organizations as well as leaders from our campaign effort. It was a very productive meeting where they had an opportunity to come here to the transition headquarters and talk about priority recommendations when it came to presidential appointments. I was really pleased to hear about reinvigorating civil servants and the kinds of quality appointees that we need in this administration. Uh, not just because they're LGBT, but because they're LGBT and they're qualified for this position. One of the amazing things about the meeting was we had three co-hosts from the transition team who led it. Fred Hochberg, who served as deputy administrator for the Small Business Administration. Roberta Actenberg, who was the first LGBT person appointed and confirmed by the United States Senate in a presidential administration. And Elaine Kaplan, who serves on our government operations transition team agency review. I wanted to show the community that within our own leadership, we have prominent, openly gay people serving proudly in this transition team. They had a wide range of things they wanted to talk about. I think a critically important communication from the administration and from President-elect Obama as we set out on a legislative agenda would be um, a clear communication about his desire uh, to sign an inclusive hate crimes bill in the early part of his administration and his desire and really his mandate that he get a fully inclusive employment non-discrimination bill um, early on in his administration. Another one that I think is just going to be very important is at census. Uh, we have a census coming up um, and LGBT issues right now uh, are not going to be any part of the census. One of the concerns that the LGBT community raised is making sure that the census form includes sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. It's hard to talk about the needs of our community if government doesn't count our community. Legally, and from a policy perspective, this is one of the most exposed communities. There are no federal laws, none. And none of the benefits flow to families, working class families that need them, who happen to be LGBT families. We're looking for issues in which we share a concern that the black community shares, and that's HIV and AIDS. The nation's capital that we live in, one in every 20 people is infected with HIV and AIDS. We're the most resourced country in the world, and that's worse than HIV infection rate in Port-au-Prince, which is the poor capital of the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The key issues for our community are still the issues for all Americans. We care very deeply about those things. We care about American issues. The larger society and governmental history is such that we are uh, kind of relegated to certain issues or certain concerns. We are a community that is hungry to be a part of the table and coming up with solutions on economic challenges that face our community as well as, as health care. I don't think we've ever done this before. I don't think any administration has ever had this high level of a meeting with national LGBT leaders. So for this community to come to the table and say to us what we've heard from every community we've spoken to, come in and fix government. Fix what's wrong, the change that we need, the change that we were promised. That's what the LGBT community want to talk about.